takes over from governments. But we can see the evidence of the dubious character of this monetary system. When in 1933, the US government, at the behest of the Federal Reserve, enacted legislation prohibiting the use of gold as legal tender. Why would you do that? Because there's some crisis in the system. If there's a crisis in the system, you must turn to gold. Because gold will restore stability. Ask any Argentinian and he'll tell you that. The United States government prohibited the use of gold as legal tender. Number one, 1933. Number two, if you were caught with gold after a certain day, you would be fined 10,000 US dollars or you could spend six months in jail. Why this drastic measure? You had to take your gold and give it to the government and the government will give you paper in its place at twenty dollars an ounce. So all of the United States had to hand over their gold to Uncle Sam. Those who were smart shipped their gold to Switzerland and got away. After the United States government had taken all the gold, then in 1934, January I believe, they then devalued the dollar. What's that? We never had this word before, devalue? We thought value was stable. Value is created by the one God. How can you devalue money? Yes, you can. When you stop using money with intrinsic value, gold and silver, and you replace it with money which has no intrinsic value, then you can devalue. So we see the system working now. The United States government devalued the US dollar from $20 to one ounce of gold to 35. And then they removed the law prohibiting the use of gold as legal tender. So all of America rushed to buy back their gold. But in the process, if you had, if you had changed 100 gold coins of one ounce each and you got 2,000 US dollars and now you take the 2,000 US dollars to buy back your gold, guess how many gold coins you got? I think it would be around 57 or 58. Where has your money gone? Who took it? In this case, it's so easy to understand that the money is in the pocket of Uncle Sam. 43% of the wealth of the people has been unjustly acquired by the government, which means the Federal Reserve to the simple expedient of devaluing the money. That's what has been happening around the world since then. And this was not the first, I think it's called Ponzi scheme, this monetary system. This monetary system, this Ponzi scheme, had been tried through history by many, many, many people. The Chinese tried it. <laughs> Everybody who tried this Ponzi scheme eventually ended up losing. It always collapsed, always collapsed. This particular Ponzi scheme began to shake 
when France decided under Charles de Gaulle that this was unjust the United States is printing more paper than they have gold if Dr. Zohaidi were to issue more checks then he has money in his account that would be fraudulent fraudulent and you could go to jail for that and that's what the US government was doing no other government could do that only the United States they were financing the Vietnam War by just printing and printing and printing more paper money and Charles de Gaulle was quite angry because the French could understand the unjust nature of the monetary system Charles de Gaulle got up in the French National Assembly and delivered a historic address in which he analyzed the monetary system and demonstrated how this monetary system was not only fraudulent but also was designed to give to the United States of America an unfair advantage over the rest of the world he then began to do something which shook the system France started to redeem dollars for gold <laughs> and the United States didn't like that at all because if the French could do it then Saudi Arabia might join the line and Kuwait might join the line and many other countries and because the United States did not have the gold for all the paper the whole thing would collapse De Gaulle died he first had to resign and then he died but those who succeeded De Gaulle in France and I admired them so much continued the system continued the policy and how one wishes that Malaysia had those who could continue what Dr. Mahathir had started with Dinar so in August of 1971 the French came along again one more time Richard Nixon was uh, the US president and said hi Uncle Sam are you there three billion USD and we want the gold Nixon retired to Camp David that weekend that's what they usually do and he realized the game was up the game was up the Ponzi scheme had collapsed the United States can no longer continue delivering re redeeming paper for gold and so he delivered an, an address to the world and said we gave our word but we don't have to keep our word not in Islam not with those who follow Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. the characteristic of a true Muslim the characteristic of a true Christian of a true Jew, of a true Hindu, of a true Buddhist is that when he gives his word he keeps his word that's the basis of international relations Pacta Sunt Servanda but that's what Richard Nixon did he tore up he tore up the Bretton Woods Accord he decided to abandon the provisions of the International Monetary Fund and so from September 1971 the US dollar is in no man's land 